Hi, and welcome back to the Simplicity Series. Today, I want to focus on the greatest commandment that was given to us by Jesus and how simply he summed up the greatest commandment of man. Now, a Pharisee is asking Jesus, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And his motivation for asking this question is to tempt Jesus, to try to trip him up, because these Pharisees, they really don't like Jesus. They don't like the fact that he is preaching the kingdom of heaven. They don't like the fact that he's walking in signs and wonders and healing people on the Sabbath day. Hello, how can you not see a miracle for the greatness that it is and get to, you know, you did it on the day that you're not supposed to be doing anything. <sighs> Motivation. Now Jesus is going to answer him and he's going to give him a lesson on motivation. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Did you get that, folks? Love is the first and greatest commandment. And what you love is of paramount importance. When you love God and God's way and God's kingdom and God's principles and God's Christ, you can love yourself and love your neighbors. But if your motivation is not love, your motivation is not God, most likely your motivation is going to be selfish. It's going to be self. It's going to be soulish. It's going to be evil. I'm just going to say it. When you serve God, it's impossible to have the motivation of evil. It's possible to do evil because we are sinful creatures. But the motivation and the spirit of God will always give us a kick in our pants. It's like, you know, why did you do that? That was completely wrong. And thank you, Jesus. Right now we live in grace, repentance, and moving away from our sinful ways. Check. What's your motivation? Is it serving God? We have free will. We don't have to if we don't want to. But the wages of sin is death. Serving God brings us to eternal life. And there's even something better. Jesus died on the cross, not just to forgive us of our sins. He died on the cross to bring us out of the curse of whatever curse that we're in. He died to give us healthy bodies and healthy minds. He died to take the shame away, to take the rejection away, to bring us as God intended us, to operate in power, in love, and with sound minds. That means our decision-making is good. We walk in power. And if you walk in the Holy Spirit, Jesus did give you the anointing to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to preach the gospel, to raise the dead. There's no end of what you can do because the ultimate goal, and this is stated in the Genesis, the beginning, is for us to be governors on the earth and to have a society on earth as it is in heaven. Check your motivation. Is your motivation love or are you walking in fear? Fear causes people to hate, causes people to riot, causes people to uh, stand on cars, jump up and down and scream because they, they fear that there's going to be change. People fear change and change is not always a bad thing, especially when you're changing towards God. So 
simple. Love God. And when you love God, you study his ways. You become his child. You get all your shame erased. You get all your sins erased. And you follow him. And you follow his commands and you follow his precepts. You can, you, you can choose not to. It's okay. Follow the world. The ending of the world is death. And the ending of Jesus in our lives is eternal life. You choose. It's simple. Talk to you next time.